Right, yes. So this is the last uh, seminar for uh, the mega series for this uh, um, semester. We're going to advertise an upper at the end of the talk here. But for now, we have a speaker, which is Loic, who received the master's degree in microengineering, specializing in robotics from EPFL in 2019. And then until 2022, he worked at Instant Lab at EPFL as a scientific assistant. And then he recently started his PhD. He's developing a novel flexure based mechanism with nonlinear behaviors such as constant force, stiffness tuning, and bistable mechanisms. We're looking forward to hear to you whenever you are ready. Thank you. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here for this presentation. So, my name is Lekti Sodaget, and I am a PhD student at Instant Lab. And I will present you today precision mechanism with nonlinear load deformation characteristics based on buckle beams. So in this presentation, I will start with a small introduction, and then we will see uh, what kind of analytical modeling we can do for buckle beams. And then we will model uh, two basic bistable buckle beam mechanism, and then we'll go through applications and finally conclude this presentation. So buckle beams, uh, what are they? So it's, it is often a straight, an initially straight beam that we pre-stress and at some point, at some critical load, we have the buckling of the beam. And as you can as you can see, it can buckle upwards or downwards. And this behavior can be used for uh, by to obtain bistability in a compliant mechanism, for example. With uh, buckle beams, we can also have snap through behaviors. Uh, so, for example, we can have a uh, uh, a sudden change of uh, the deflection of the beam. So that's the, the snap through. We have the jump of energy. And we can use the buckle beams uh, as uh, energy storage or to, to release uh, energy in, uh, in a mechanism. We can also uh, tune the stiffness of a mechanism. And we can also obtain negative stiffness uh, in some case. Uh, we can also have a force limitation in a mechanism or also a constant force mechanism. Uh, this is the case with a buckle beam. If I apply the critical load, if no, I continue to apply a certain preload displacement, I will um, have more or less the same uh, force. So we can use it to have a constant force mechanism. We can also have a zero force mechanism using buckle beams. So to give you some state of the art, uh, I will start by uh, citing this uh, mechanism. This is a sa for safe puncture uh, optimized tool for retinal vein cannulation. So that's a device that is inserted inside the eye of the patient with a tooltip. So the tooltip is presented here. It consists of a flexure-based pivot here, a buckle beam here, and another output uh, pivot here which uh, sustain this needle that will be used to puncture uh, inside the retinal vein. So here's the working principle. We push uh, on, the, on this uh, stage here. It will rotate the input pivot here. And uh, we have a snap through behavior when uh, we reach a certain angle where suddenly the, um, at the output, the needle will go through the, the retinal vein. So this device uh, is designed at uh, Instant Lab, so my laboratory. And here's a publication, a publication if you want more information. Another compliant mechanism with uh, buckle beams. So this is the binary stiffness compliant mechanism. Uh, it consists of a linear stage la like this. Uh, Below, we have a bistable mechanism, which is used to uh, buckle or not buckle the, um, these two uh, inclined beams here. And here's the working principle. So at first, when we push on the stage, the stiffness is very, is very high. And then when we switch this bistable mechanism, we can buckle these two beams, which will uh, preload the, 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 the linear stage to decrease its stiffness. So 
we can have uh, using uh, buckle beams um, a way to tune the stiffness of a compliant mechanism. So this uh, project was done during the PhD student uh, during the PhD thesis of uh, this um, of uh, Dr. Coupons, uh, and here's a publication. If you want more information, and uh, here's the, the the graph in uh, his in this article, uh, which shows that uh, we can um, select if we want a, a stiff linear stage. Of, or if we want to have a compliant linear stage. So for the modeling, uh, I will present you uh, three different approaches. The first one that we call Lagrangian approach um, assumes that the beam deflection, for example, here of a pin pinned buckle beam with four actuation is in fact a superposition of its, of its buckling modes so the buckling modes are the uh, equilibrium of the of the buckle beam. So when there there's no force applied uh, to to it, and uh, using the method of Lagrange multipliers, we can find all the the amplitudes of uh, those uh, buckling modes. We can also use a numerical approach. So we can have this, diff uh, this deflection equation of a uh, generic uh, pre-compressed beam and use it to uh, model the buckle beams. So uh, this uh, equation is for large deformations and to solve this differential equation is uh, often very uh, difficult. So we usually evaluate um, this, uh, this solution numerically. Uh, our proposed analytical model is the following. So we we use the, the deflection equation that we uh, saw in the previous slide, and we apply a linearization in order to simplify uh, the calculation. And this way, we can have an analytical model of uh, the, the buckle beam. And to compare these models in terms of model accuracy, so if we can consider large deformation of the beam. So large, con large deformation is something la like this. So uh, it is uh, yeah large deformation. Uh, for our model, it's more for small deformation. And in terms of uh, fast uh, design, so how quickly can we have uh, the, the design? So do we have closed form formulas? And the rapidity of the, of the modeling also. So is the, the, the model generic and easy to, to obtain. So we can uh, compare uh, these uh, approaches with the Lagrangian approach, which has a, an accuracy not, not so good because uh, often we need to um, consider a finite uh, amount of uh, buckling modes. So this is a, uh, an approximation. And the, we, we have closed form for formulas, so the, we have a fast design. Uh, and for the modeling, um, uh, the, it is not really generic, so it is uh, not so good as well. And for the numerical approach, here we can really have we can really have large deformation for sure, but we do not have closed form formulas or generic model. And here, our proposed model, um, is better in terms of accuracy compared to the Lagrangian approach, but uh, uh, less good, I would say, from the numerical approach. We can have closed form formulas and the model is generic. It can consider all uh, pre-compressed uh, beams. So here are the two basic bistable buckle beams uh, mechanism that we will uh, consider, we will model. So the first one is a pin pinned buckle beam and the second one is a fixed pin buckle beam and both of these mechanisms will be um, actuated using a moment or a control angle at the at the, the input pivot which is situated on on the right of the of the mechanism so let's start with the pin pin buckle beam 
So with the model, we found this graph with the input moment as a function of the input angle. So as you can see, there are two branches, the upwards branch and the downward branch. So we have two identical solution, but which, uh, which they are symmetrical in, uh, in rotation. And we can see the two stable mode of the, of the buckle beam, which are when we are uh, upwards or downwards. Uh, that we found when the, the input moment is uh, is zero. And to pass from one uh, stable mode to, to the other, we can um, increase the, 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 the moment. So we increase the, the moment. And at some point, at some point, we reach a maximum moment. And if we continue to increase the, the moment, we don't have any solution on this branch. So we have snap root to go to the other branch where we have solu solutions. And so here we have the snap through like this. And we are in the other branch. And we can decrease the, the moment to go to uh, the second uh, stable mode. And we can come back to the to stable mode one, to the previous stable mode, by applying a negative moment. And we, again, uh, go to this uh, moment limit, so the maximum mom the maximum moment, or the minimum moment in this case, where we have the snap root in the other uh, on the other side. And we can also, uh, instead of applying a moment, we can control in in angle the the buckle beam. Here we will follow another path. Then um, we will. Start from the stable mode one, we'll go to moment limit one, but we can continue if we control the angle. And then we will reach an angle limit, so a max maximum angle where we do not find we do not find any other angle. And we will have a snap through uh, to the other branch, and we can do uh, the, the loop, we can continue with this uh, hysteresis. And on the right, we plot the output angle as a function of the input angle. So at first, when we are in the stable mode, we have some angle at the output, which is at my, at my left hand. And then when we move with the input angle, uh, the, um, the angle is quite always the same. It is quite constant. And then when we are at the snap through, then we suddenly we, we we suddenly change the sign of uh, the output angle. So it is quite decoupled during the actuation, but then at snap through, we suddenly change the, the state of the output. And we can do the, the loop again. For the fixed pin configuration, it is quite the, the same characteristic. However, we have some, the differences are that uh, the, um, the moment limit uh, is higher and the stable modes are also higher in terms of, um, of input angle. And uh, at the output, we can now look at the output moment, which is the reaction moment that, that I have on the, on the left side. So it is quite constant. It increases, but it is, it is quite constant until the snap through where the reaction moment at the output suddenly uh, changes its sign. And we can do the loop again like this. Okay, so to validate the model, we made an experimental setup. We have the, the buckle beam sustained by two ball bearings with the one one is the input bearing, and the other one is the is made for the output for the output pivot, and we can uh, actuate them using lateral linear stages, and we can measure the the so with the linear stages we push on a lever on the on the input pivot, and we can 
measure the, the, the force applied at, and thus the, the moment applied with a force sensor. And at the output, if uh, we are in the fixed configuration, we use this lateral linear stage in order to put the angle to, to zero. And we measure the, the output moment with this force sensor. And when we are in the pin-pin configuration, then we have this laser displacement sensor uh, in order to measure the output angle. So for this experimental setup, we can both um, test pin pin and fixed pin buckle beams. Um, also for the buckle beam here, it is uh, it was uh, 200 millimeters of length. Um, you can see here the how oh, it is tested. So at first we let the system in a stable mode. So here for the pin pin configuration, and we apply more and more displacement with the linear stage. Uh, here it was at the limit angle. So if we push a little bit more, then we will have the snap through. And if we configure uh, the experiment in a fixed pin configuration, we have uh, this um, uh, force sensor, which blocks the, the output angle to zero. And we push at the input um, force sensor here, and we can go to the limit angle. And if we apply a little bit more displacement, then we will have also the snap through. OK, so uh, we here are all the results. So we compare the analytical model, the FEM model, so the finite uh, element method model, uh, with also the experiment. And we have tested uh, different pre-compression. So as I said, we have a beam length of 200 millimeters. And here we are applying a pre-compression displacement of 7.5 millimeters, then 5 millimeters and 3 millimeters. So that's the, all the data that we have in green, in blue, and in red, uh, respectively. So as you can see, if we have a higher pre-compression, we also have higher stable position, uh, which is shown here. And we have also higher, higher uh, moment limit. We can do that also for the fixed pin. And for both configurations, we have good agreement between the results. OK, so now let's go to the applications. So those are compliant mechanisms that I'm working that I'm working on at uh, the laboratory. Uh, so uh, I work on a bistable gripper, a load cell with stiffness tuning, and a constant force surgical tool. So let's go with the bistable gripper. So for the concept, um, this is the the concept is the following. So we have the this gripper like this. So it is shown as fabricated with uh, a beam that is straight. And we have a preloading stage, which is used to uh, buckle the, um, the, the, the beam. And uh, in this case, the gripper is opened. So we have this jaw here, which opens. And we are, as you can see, in a pin-pinned uh, configuration for this buckle beam. And to close the gripper, we can apply a torque on, on the input pivot. And at the output, the, the, the gripper we, will close uh, with a snap through. So it will suddenly close uh, after, the acu after the actuation. And here we are with the gripper when it is closed. And uh, uh, the, the object blocks uh, the jaw so that we have an angle of uh, zero. So here we are. Uh, in a fixed pin configuration for this buckle beam. And we have a force which is applied to the object, to the object, e even if we do not have any um, torque on the input pivot. And then we can reopen the, the gripper using a negative moment applied to the input pivot, which will suddenly, at the snap through, reopen the gripper. So for the advantages, we don't require uh, power 
uh, when the creeper is in open or closed uh, state. Uh, we can have very fast switching uh, using the, the beam snap through. The output force is limited to a maximum value to, uh, prevent, to prevent any damage on the object. So this is due to the fact, as we have seen in the modeling, that this moment, uh, this reaction moment at the output is limited. And the preloading stage, so the preloading stage displacement can be used to adjust the opening of the of the gripper and the gripping force. Okay, so that's the, um, the, I mean, using the concept, now we can uh, design a flexure implementation of the bistable gripper. So for the preloading stage, it is now a um, compliant uh, uh, stage. And we have a cross spring pivot for the input pivot. We have the buckle beam here, and we have a cross spring pivot also at the, at the output. And we have this um, this output mechanism here in order to have a parallel motion of um, the jaws. So both jaws will have the same displacement, but uh, in opposite direction. And here we we can see the gripper when it is closed. So I have a demonstrate demonstrator here. 3D printed to show the behavior. So now we are closed. Here it is open. And then we can use this gripper as this bistable gripper as a industrial gripper for pick and place. So I can grab this part, put it somewhere else. And that's it. <laughs> okay, uh, so for the model, we made some modification from the ideal pin pin uh, buckle beam because now we need to consider the the angular stiffness at the output and the angular stiffness at the input pivot. But we use the same uh, generic uh, modeling that I that I have presented you. And here are the results. So this is FEM results. We have oops also yeah we are also a, a prototype of the gripper made uh, of steel, uh, which is here actuated with a voice call to actuate the input pivot. And uh, the speed is shown here 0 0.006 times. Uh, it is shown when we close the gripper and when we open it. And here is the, um, the gripper actuated with SMA springs, so shape memory alloy springs shown here and here, uh, and each of them is heated up in order to, to pull the input lever here in order to change the state of the of the gripper you know, to open and close it. But yeah, for the, um, we are working uh, for this project in collaboration with uh, LAI from uh, EPFL, and we have an industrial partner, Micron, for this project. And we are still working on to uh, lower the response time of the SMA. Because for the moment, it takes uh, five seconds to uh, open and then close the, the gripper using these uh, SMA springs compared to the snap through, which is really quick, less than 10 milliseconds. So the, the results, so we compare again the analytical model, the FEM and the experiment. And overall, uh, the results are in good agreement. 
Here's the, the input moment as a function of the input angle. We have the output displacement of the jaws as a function of the input angle. And here is the output force that we are applying to uh, the object. Another application is a load cell with uh, stiffness turning. So we have a flexure pivot made of three blades, two horizontal and one vertical. And the goal is to change uh, its angular uh, stiffness in order to have different sensitivity or a force applied to this probe. Uh, and uh, measuring the angle, we can have different resolution of, uh, of the force. For that, we have a preload mechanism, which consists of two linear stages and a linear spring K0 shown here. And when we push on this linear stage, we will compress the spring, which will apply a compressive load in the two horizontal blades of the pivot. Here's the flexure implementation. We push this uh, uh, linear stage, which is made of two uh, parallel leaf spring stage. And we have here the, um, the spring, which is also a linear, a, uh, so a parallel leaf spring stage, which compress the horizontal blades of the flexure pivot. Here's the modeling for all the, the blades of the flexure pivot. And the results are the following. So we compare the, the angular stiffness of the load cell against the um, preloading displacement X0. So for small preloading displacement, the, the angular stiffness is positive. And at some preloading displacement, we can reach uh, zero stiffness. Then we have, if we continue to apply more preloading displacement, we will go into a negative stiffness region. And at some point we have uh, an asymptot, and then we are in a hysteretic stiffness. And here is the moment angle characteristics of the load cell. So for small clothing displacement, we have a positive stiffness, and then we can reach near zero angular stiffness, shown here in yellow. So here we have a very high sensitivity of the load cell. And then if we continue, we can have a negative stiffness, and thus we will have a bistable behavior of, uh, the, of the load cell. So this project was continued by Dr. Uh, Michel Smekzak, who did his PhD at Instant Lab on a load cell with uh, stiffness turning. So he added some uh, mechanism on this load cell. So for example, yeah, an offset force adjustment and some um, weights in order to uh, equilibrate the, um, the, the load cell. And yeah, so we designed this uh, load cell for micro and nano probing. And he compared uh, this device, which is shown here, to compare to um, other four sensors. And uh, he, he showed that uh, with, uh, by having stiffness tuning, we can reach really small um resolution value so here it's um 10 nanonewton of resolution and for a range so for the maximum force of uh, 0 0.1 newton uh, the third and last uh, application is the constant force surgical tool so um, the surgeons, in order to know if the patient's uh, hearing loss 
come from the middle ear or from the inner ear. He usually palpates the ossicles, so that that's uh, there are three tiny bones that we have in the in the middle ear. They are called ossicles, and they and the surgeon palpates the the, the ossicles in order to know uh, their mobility. So the the sound coming from the tympanic membrane it should be here. He needs to know if it is if the sound is well transmitted through these ossicles, so it is mechanically transmitted to the the, the cochlea, to the um, inner ear. And uh, so the surgeon applies a certain force and see the displacement to assess the the to evaluate the mobility of uh, the ossicles. But this force is quite small. It's in the range of uh, one gram e equivalent force. So it's 10, approximately 10 uh, millinewtons. So that's very small. And from one surgeon to another, they should not really have the same uh, force. So that's something quite subjective. And in order to remove this uh, subjectivity, we can use this new tool, which has a buckle beam based mechanism at the tooltip, which buckles to a to a specific uh, to a uh, to a specific critical load, and thus, whatever the experience of the surgeon, uh, it will be always the 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 same force. So the force will be limited to a constant value. So this is a way to objectively assess the ossicle, the ossicle mobility. This is the modeling of this um, mechanism. And here are the results. So as you can see, we have, again, two branches. One, in fact, is, in, is when the, the, the buckle beam of the mechanism buckles upwards. And we have the second branch if the buckle beam has buckled downwards. And as you can see, the, the force is quite constant, uh, whatever the, the, the displacement in this case. So it is better for our application to have this branch. So we fabricate, we fabricated some, some uh, prototypes in order to have uh, experiments and we had four samples in total and three of them buckled upwards which is not the range that we have and we have only one sample that um, that has buckled downwards and we can see that the force is quite constant and equal to one uh, gram force for a range of uh, 0 0.9 um, millimeters. Here's the, the whole prototype. So with the handle and the shaft, those are made of uh, stainless steel. And we have the tooltip, uh, which can be fabricated in fused silica, in this case, and here in a resin. So this is glass and this is plastic. And here is a video of the prototype testing. So here we can see the ossicles of a human uh, cadaver. And we will insert the tool through the, the ear canal. And now the surgeon is pushing, is palpating the, the ossicle. And we can see that at some point we have the mechanism which buckles. And at this moment, the ossicle will have always the same displacement because it is always the same force applied to it. So yeah, this is a way to have objective assessment of the ossicle mobility. Okay, so to summarize, we have seen in this presentation 
a generic uh, analytical model. And this generic analytical model was uh, applied to pin pin and fixed pin buckle beams under rotation actuation. And we have seen some uh, applications where we can see that buckle beams are useful. And overall, we have a good agreement with the, the model. So yeah, this is good overall. Um, here are some of my uh, publications. So on uh, buckle beam based uh, mechanism, if you need more information. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Yeah, thank you for the very great presentation. So, any questions? For I have uh, a few questions. <laughs> so, I don't remember for which prototype or tool, but there was a general point about uh, being able to limit maximum force as you get by the tool. Mm -hmm. So, then don't damage the sample or whatever you're trying to probe. Or, uh, can you maybe explain a little bit more how, in general, you would uh, implement this maximum force control? Uh, so you can use buckle beams for sure. I've seen that also for uh, forceps, for medical forceps that, that, that we can use in order to not uh, damage the tissue of the, of the patient. Um, but it can also be done with uh, springs, this uh, limitation of force. So if we have a preloaded, uh, a preloaded spring, and uh, if we can push more than this uh, <laughs> preloaded uh, force, then we can have this uh, force limitation also. And is that something that incorporate into your demonstrate the demo? Because uh, I recall maybe for the demo, you also have the maximum force control. Um, I'm not sure I get your questions. Uh, so uh, for this, uh, for the not for the not for the ear, but for the demo that you have the physical one, the gripper, the gripper. Oh, yeah. sorry, yeah. yeah, yes. So as you can see, under the, the the results here, that's the output force for each jaw, mm -hmm. and uh, it is limited. So we cannot apply more force than uh, one point six. 1.6 Newton. So here you're, you're using the snap to instability to control the, the output force rather than any other external. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. In terms of the traditional creepers, uh, you said like the, the ability to snap to so short reaction time uh, and limiting the force. I was wondering, uh, do you have in terms of life expectancy of your uh, your tool uh, due to the last deformation? Do you experience um, some like, uh, fatigue or uh, that would be that that would also make the properties of, of the repair evolve with time? Um, yes. So what we so we model with uh, FEM uh, simulation. So. This is all static um, study. And here we can see the, 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 the stress inside the, the, the mechanism, inside the material. And uh, if we are below the uh, fatigue stress, uh, then um, yeah, we can do multiple uh, cycles. And then, yeah, at some point, maybe it will, it will work, but we'll know a little bit the, the, this value. In the case you showed, it was like, mostly so we we stay below this uh, the 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 fatigue stress for uh, ten at the power seven uh, cycles. Uh, however, we do not uh, consider any dynamics in the in the gripper. That's uh, too difficult to 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 model with uh, FEM. And so yeah, we we need to uh, test that uh, experimentally. I think. Would have follow up question actually. So. Um... I think my colleagues were doing the dynamics and especially use low cells to measure forces with a resolution of the order of magnitude of the newton. The big tricky part is that often we use tools that can apply like, let's say, thousands of newtons. 
Mm -hmm. And so open what is not too challenging will not be too concerned in the terms of the ratio of the range versus the resolution or the resolution versus the range, mm -hmm. but more about the uh, maximum loads that the cell can like handle and survive or not being damaged. Mm -hmm. And in the magazine we showed is it easy to incorporate some safety mechanism or just be able to not necessarily being able to measure with the, having a large range, but at least having a large operating conditions and under which your load cell is not being damaged. So for the load cell or for the sample to not get more damaged? for the load cells. Uh, okay. Here yeah. you show that you can increase the range, but is it also doing doable to increase the the, the forces that won't damage the mm -hmm. mechanism. Yeah, so we have um, mechanical stop here to, to block the, the angle of the load cell. So the the the, the, the way yeah. I think what he's asking is, is about overloading this load cell. So if you design this load cell, mm -hmm. well it's great with stiffness tuning. Mm -hmm. I think his question is whether you can use this mechanism to design a overloading detection mechanism. Mm -hmm. So for the Okay, so for the sample to not get damaged then? Yeah, so here yeah. the sample will be mm -hmm. your low cell mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. So suppose you're mounting this low cell in some experiment, use the whatever tool and you apply a force that's way too much over the range, the mm -hmm. maximum uh, limit of the range, then you know in commercial low cells, there are some overloading protection mechanisms. I don't know how they implement it, but mm -hmm. I think the question is more explorative. Mm -hmm. See whether you have any thoughts about that. Yeah, so there's a solution where you use the load cell uh, when uh, the flexure pivot in, is in uh, negative stiffness. And then in this case, it is bistable, so it will be stable, stabilized um, at five uh, degrees if you block the, um, uh, the angular position of the load cell. So it will be blocked here. And uh, if you Applied more than uh, more than this force, then it will switch to the to the other side. So that's a way to uh, to have protection. I guess we also have with this uh, added system here the offset force adjustment to apply a constant uh, torque on the on the pivot here. So all these curves can be up, up also. Mm -hmm. So you can have also a constant force with uh, this mechanism. Yes? Uh, in the analytical model, how do you impose the mm -hmm. So uh, basically, most of the time, as we can see here, I use a preloading screw. So that's what I was showing uh, before. I can screw or unscrew to, to change the pre-compression. Um, in the, in terms of the equations, you... Sorry? In terms of the equations. Oh, in terms of the equation, yeah, oh, okay, sorry. So uh, do you, you linearize, but do you keep the, the one non-linearity in the... So we, sorry, the we, we assume that the, um, the arc length of the, of the buckle beam is always constant, so we are, a an inextensible uh, beam. We uh, we do not we neglect the, the, the compressive motion, and so this uh, arc length can be computed with uh, the the integral of uh, of all the, the the deflection to get the this length, and then we can relate to the to this displacement here delta L, which is the pre-compression displacement. It is used also for the previous models. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering about the material you use for the vehicle beams. Can you use a wide range of materials, or does it have to be specific? Uh, um, yeah, you can use uh, quite all the, the the materials that you want. But yeah, at some point, if you have too much compression, then uh, it will break. So that you you need to consider as well. So, but you, you can compute that with the analytical model, the, the stress okay. inside the beam. And uh, what you have to do is to not exceed these uh, limits. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. I know the industrial wake cells have a temperature rating that they often that they're optimally functioning in and the effects of humidity or temperature can uh -huh. change the performance. So for your I guess uh, applications and such, how do you uh, imagine a temperature can lose difference to change the performance? So it so for the temperature it will yeah, it will have an impact on the um, on the stiffness of the load cell and thus on the on the sensitivity. Um, but I I think for this uh, application it will be used in a closed chamber where the the temperature is really fixed. Mm -hmm. Maybe even with vacuum. I think. So for example, in the human here, mm -hmm. the human body can have a wide yeah. fluctuations, no? Mm -hmm. So. For that, um, mm -hmm. we did not test yet the the characteristics as a function of the temperature, but yeah, it could be yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Could definitely change also the um, the critical force. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question about this tool? So I think I missed it. Uh, what is what is the purpose of this tool to test the form? What's the reading that the physicians mm -hmm. get. Okay, so the, during the, the operation, the, um, the surgeon will look through a microscope, which will, and we will see, so we directly see this thing. And here we can see the displacement. So this is visual, but maybe with uh, more, uh, with new microscope, maybe we can have some uh, reading by, Adding some graduation on the microscope to uh, to really um, measure the, the the displacement. And but here, so the the media of mm -hmm. are we seeing the physician's hand pressing the tool, or are we seeing the movement due to this natural instability of the tool? It's here. Yeah, he he is pushing, but yeah, he's pushing by a lot, maybe mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. But the force is limited. The snap the, there is no snap through in this case. That's just a critical uh, load. So basically, if it's uh, the same thing. If I apply a load and at some point we, I reach the critical value and I'm always applying the same force. I see. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, no, there's no snap through in this case. Mm -hmm. Different from the gripper. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, then let's thank Mr. Third. So next uh, Thursday, 5 p.m. like exactly this time, we're gonna have like a closing of the semester at the home, and you're all invited and welcome to join us and 